Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video all about this thing here. Now this is something that you don't tend to see on the channel. Uh, normally I'm flying stuff. Uh, I've done some radio controlled cars and trucks and things as well. But this is my first adventure in to boats. Now this is a new model, it's been around for quite a while, but I've been interested in trying this out. My friend and I in particular have, uh, have been wanting to get potentially a couple of these and race them. And uh, I wanted a boat that wasn't particularly expensive and that was relatively easy to set up and get running. And uh, this is the one that I found. Now this one I actually ordered from Banggood. Uh, they're available from loads of different places, both in this yellow colour but also in red as well. And I thought what I'll do in this video is kind of show you how this runs and how it goes. Um, it goes very well indeed. It's tremendous fun. And I'm going to use a traditional radio with it. Now you can order it with... Um, kind of a, a, a pistol grip style radio with a little um, controller at the side, similar to what you'd use for controlling something like a radio control car. And it also comes with a battery and a charger and stuff. And um, this one, I've got it without all those pieces uh, because, yeah, I want to use it with my good old Tyrannus. Now, that did present a couple of little tweaks and challenges in terms of getting it all to run. Uh, there's only two things you need to worry about on a boat. Well, this is a very simple boat anyway. Uh, the first of all is there's a little prop. Uh, there's a whacking great big motor in here. And then we have a rudder. So we have a steering channel and we have a throttle channel. That's it. Now, the only other thing you can probably spot on here is this kind of piece of uh, flexible tubing, which has a little... Um, Hopefully you can get see it there at the back. Uh, that's going to pull water in, and it's a water-cooled ESC and a water-cooled motor as well. Now, the idea with this is uh, once I've got this video done, as I'm going to start messing about with it, as a pilot that does a lot of FPV, that plays a lot with things like flight controllers, this could be a great platform to start buggering about with. Uh, I think putting FPV on here and seeing how that works could be spectacular. I think it would be interesting, potentially for boats, uh, radio control enthusiasts, to see what FPV is like on something like a boat too, and show how easy it is. And then I'm probably going to set up something like a flight controller in here. Now, if I take the top off, the top off is just, you know, a shaped bit of plastic. Uh, in here, we have absolutely tons and tons of room. So we have, obviously, the motor. We have the tubing for the water cooling. There's a beautiful space here for a flight controller. Or a sailing controller. It's not an FC anymore, is it? It's a something else. Anyway... Ardu Pilot have something called Ardu Boat, which we could install into a flight controller and pop it in here. And we could also do something with iNav. iNav in the latest releases also supports uh, rovers and boats as well. So that could be an awful lot of fun over the next uh, month or two, kind of playing with this and putting some of the electronics in that we use on a regular basis in the flying side of the hobby. So let me just show you how this comes. Uh, I'll show you how unboxing it. Um, you've pretty much seen everything, to be honest. With the version that I've got that doesn't come with the controller, the battery, or the charger, which is stuff I've already got, uh, it's a very quick and easy thing to take apart. So this is how the box comes. It's a reasonable size. And again, this is the version that does not have the radio control in it and it doesn't have the battery and other things too. Now, this is uh, an ABS hull. Length is about 700 millimeters. Hull width is about 190 millimeters. The servo is a whacking 40 gram waterproof unit at the back that is uh, connected via a gator or two to keep the water out of the body to the rudder at the back of the model. The motor is a brushless 18,000 kV motor. Again, that's water-cooled. And the ESC is also a water-cooled brushless 40-amp ESC. Now, on the ESC, it does say it supports 2 to 4S LiPos. I've been running this one here on 3S, and it is absolutely fab. I think you'd have to be a little bit careful on 4S, maybe making sure that things don't overheat. 
To take the top off the boat, you just turn the little control at the back. I had to slacken mine off very slightly. Mine was incredibly stiff. And then you can lift up the body and you are into everything. Top speed is down here at about 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, you need quite a bit of room to play with this. Luckily, I have uh, things like the canal within pretty easy walking distance. Uh, but the problem with a fast boat particularly a relatively small fast boat like this, is even though it's a nice bright colour, it gets small really quickly. Which again is one of the reasons why I think putting some like FPV on it in a future video would be a lot of fun. The hardest thing about setting this up is figuring out how to put this little stand together because you don't want to put it down flat on the table because it's going to be putting a lot of stress onto the rudder at the back of the model. So once this is together, then you can just sit the boat on and it'll look fantastic on your shelf even when you're not out running it around on the water. In terms of the setup, there were a couple of little wrinkles. Now the standard model setup on the Tronis I used here, I just set up the standard default model that has throttle aileron elevator rudder, just the default order on my radio. I'm going to use the throttle Surprise, surprise to operate the throttle. And I'm going to use the other stick, the, what I would usually use for aileron or roll, mine's a mode 2 radio, as the control for managing the rudder. And that means I've got two independent controls and it's a lot easier and cleaner for me, but you could set it up any way you want. So it's just a case of binding the receiver to it and then plugging in the ESC into the throttle channel, channel 1, and the rudder control into the aileron output, in my case, which is channel 2. And this is a great use for one of the little X4Rs that I've got knocking around the spares bin that I wouldn't use for anything else. Now if we just jump into Companion, let me just kind of finish showing you how I've got this set up. In terms of the setup, it was pretty standard stuff. I um, just trimmed the rudder to make sure there was equal throws in both directions. Very similar to setting up a flight control surface on something like a plane or a wing. And then the only little challenge I had was the ESC is set to only start running from a PWM value of 1500. So I've done a couple of things. First of all is I've changed the throttle values so that it looks like this, so that there is an offset and the throttle only runs from the middle channel position to the chop channel position and then also I put a throttle cut on because the ESC doesn't seem to want to initialize unless it briefly sees the minus 100 position of the throttle. What I'll do is I'll share this model in a link down below. If you've got a Tyrannus and you want to give this thing a go, then you can just download the model and give it a try. Plug your ESC into the channel 1 and the rudder servo into channel 2 and you should be away. So what's it like on the water? Well, as I kind of said at the beginning, it is absolutely fantastic fun. Uh, although 60 kilometers an hour doesn't sound very quick, uh, it makes the model get very small very, very quickly indeed. And it has got quite a turn of speed, even on 3S. So personally, if you've got a load of 3S batteries hanging around, like I have, 2200s in particular, this is a great way to use them. They fit neatly in the side of the model and they provide a decent amount of runtime. Only a couple of things to be a little bit careful of with here is if you go crazy you can flip it over so uh, I'm making sure that whenever I go out I'm taking out the little extendable pole that uh, used to be there for the days of golf when I would regularly land golf balls in water hazards. Uh, those very long extendable poles are great to try and recover the craft if it flips over. Uh, but if you are managing the, uh, the speed so that you slow down for the turns, it has a reasonably small turning circle so you can get around. It doesn't have reverse, so be careful of that. Try not to run into any reeds or weeds at the edge of wherever it is. Um, and initially, when you're first getting the hang of it, I try and keep it in the shallows in particular so that if you did have a problem, you can definitely get it back without having to try and wade or go for a swim. So there we have it. Again, this isn't a new model. This has been kicking around for a while. There are lots of channels out there that have already played with it. So for me, this is a new part of the hobby that I'm excited getting into. So 
stay tuned for more videos of this. Uh, this is also going to be the first video in what will become a new series over the coming month or two where we'll do all the things like add either Ardu Rover or iNav Rover onto here, put some FPV equipment on it and uh, give this a little bit of a brain and have some fun with it. But even without all that stuff installed, if you've thought about having a mess about with a boat and you already have all the radio control equipment, you know, you have a radio, you have your charger, you have some 3S batteries kicking about, this is actually uh, not a bad way to get into it and just see what it's all about. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.